I started training once I was old enough to fight with my brother, and uh, that's where I think that's where a lot of good training starts in the home. You know, um, you got a brother, you got a training partner. You know, it's probably why the Lozon brothers do well. It's probably why the Florian brothers do well. Uh, the Diaz brothers. There's a theme there. You know, um, but yeah, but no. When I was 14 years old, I started karate, and um, I loved it. And I uh, stuck with it until I became a black belt. Joined the Marines. Um, was actually able to train in Okinawa, um, which is where my style's from. So that was very exciting. But um, when I came home from the Marines. I opened a karate school in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, which is where I went to college. And, uh, you know, uh, loved teaching karate, loved competing in karate tournaments. It wasn't a, you know, a fluffy McDojo karate. It was mm -hmm. a pretty hardcore style of, you know, trying our best to make it as realistic as possible, you know. Um, and then, next thing you know, mixed martial arts hits the scene, 1993, the UFC, and slowly but surely, through natural selection and evolution, our karate school became a mixed martial arts school. And here we are. You know, like I said, the karate style that we took was just straight, straight strong punches, you know, strong kicks. It was actually very much of a kickboxing style. Uh, you know, we did katas and we did very um, artsy type things with the karate, which, you know, I could have taken or left. I, I probably enjoyed them because my sensei thought they were important. But, you know, of course, the best part about all classes was the sparring at the end. And we sparred hard, and it was uh, very physical. And um, and that's the part that I took the Marines with me, uh, to the Marines with me. And, um, and I, uh, you know, I, I, it helped. Mm -hmm. It helped. I didn't. I didn't. You know. I mean. I. I always. I always used what worked, and whatever didn't work, I just didn't use. Which is pretty much the definition of, I think, mixed martial arts. But what, you know, when I was learning mixed martial arts, is that nobody was really teaching it when I started learning it. It was taught in very, very, very few places. Again, you're talking 1996. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to drive all the way up to Boston Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and train with Kenny Florian and Herberta Maya. I had to go all the way down to New York and take a train down there and train with Herberta Grace. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Enzo Gracie. Um, and, you know, there were just wasn't a lot of places to go. Um, and so that was the, the exhilarating part, learning something and then what I would do is I would come to my karate school and we would set, put some mats on the wooden floor and say, okay, let's do some jujitsu tonight. And that one night turned into two nights, it turned into four nights, and then turned into this place. Um, that was the exhilarating part about it. For me, fighting in MMA, honestly, it was nerve-wracking as hell. I almost would rather have gotten to a car accident on the way to the fight so I didn't have to do it because I was scared and I was nervous and it was, you know, it just wasn't that fun. Winning was fun. Knocking people out was fun. The party afterward was fun. You know, people say, telling me that they're proud of me and they, what, how exciting that was, and that was fun. But leading up to the fight was not fun. You know, sitting in the back room before the fight's not fun. Still not fun because I'm nervous for my guys, and I almost feel more nervous when these guys are. So, um, but you know. One thing led to another, got married and really had kids and really couldn't focus on being a fighter anymore, so um, I do miss it. I do I do miss it, but I, I don't miss being very nervous, that's for sure. So they're always like, when are you going to fight again? When are you going to fight again? When are you going to fight again? And I'm like, never, you know? Um, because wanting to fight is fun. Um, thinking about winning again is fun. But then once you get into a training camp and it locks down all your choices and your freedoms and what you can eat and what you can, can't eat and... I guess I'm just not into that anymore. And you know, at the time our school was called Reality Self-Defense, and you know, we're a karate school, we teach them grappling, who are we, um, in comparison to the other schools out there. Um, I was very competitive with my school, in mm. terms of um, wanting people to know that we were legit, what we were teaching worked. Um, I was really tired of talking and talking and teaching and talking. I'm like, I wanna show these people I can do it, you know? And that was, the big motivation. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to know that I was a good trainer, I was a good fighter, I could make them good fighters, and our school is legitimate. That's why I did it, and it's really the only reason why I did it. You know, I, I wouldn't have done it for any other reason than that. Now, when a guy comes in, starts training, and decides he's gonna fight, uh, do you think it's kind of a natural progression? Do, do guys come in thinking that they wanna fight right yeah. from the start? Yeah. Yeah. Do those guys make it? What, what, no, what's your ideal no, fighter? No. All right, here it is. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, uh, I want to fight, you know? And I say, well, you're putting the cart way before the horse, you know? 
our best fighters are the ones that come and they just enjoy it and they train and they smile and they're good friends and they're good training partners and they just are excited to learn a combination, excited to learn a new submission, excited to learn a new escape, excited to train, excited to practice, to share. And next thing you know, hey, we got an event coming up. You want to fight? All right. You know, as opposed to, I want to fight, I want to be a fighter. Because those, I want to be a fighters, I want to fight, I want to fight, they put so much pressure on themselves to not lose and to do well in sparring. They, they, they're frozen with the fear of not being great every day and not winning every exchange and not getting hit and not getting tapped out. They're so frozen by that, they just can't, they can't see the big picture and enjoy the train. And it's 99 times out of 100, they fail. And it's not fun for them. And you can tell it's not fun for them. A man is a man that can carry himself with humility and can carry himself quietly and be a good person, a helpful person, without having to advertise for themselves and advocate for how wonderful they are. That's who the real men are in this sport. You will, who you will not hear the best fighters talk about themselves and hype themselves up because they don't have to. So those, that's the definition for me as a man in mixed martial arts is a, a very humble and quiet helper and trainer. And you know who they are too because when they see someone around them that they want to get better, they will help them and they will want to teach and they'll want to share. That's what a real man does. A real man passes what he knows on to others and does it selflessly. That is the def a selfless, humble person, that is a real man. My son is in the next room right now training, you know what I mean? I want to pass it on to him. Again, a good father is selfless. A good father is, of, you know, of course, loving and caring and, and, you know, wants to treat everybody the way they want to be treated. Well, that's what our best fighters do. Our best fighters train with their training partners the way they want to be trained with, you know? The ones that go out and, and try to amp it up and try to bully people and push people around the mat, and they're, that's the opposite of what a father does. You know, so honestly, I think they go one and the same. A good training partner, a good trainer, a good fighter is is the same as a good. Uh, I think as a good father in in a, in a lot of respects. Not all respects, of course, but there are a lot of parallels to it. And they're, they're puppies. They're 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 little bear cubs. And what do bear cubs do? They wrestle and they roll and they grab and they chase each other around. That's what puppies do, and that's what our children are. Our children are puppies, you know. And it's the one place where they can do exactly what their parents tell them not to do every day. Stop wrestling. Stop fighting. Stop pushing each other around. Stop roughhousing. Well, we say roughhouse. Come on, roughhouse. Have fun. Roughhouse more, you know. And a controlled environment, of course. And you know that's. That's what they love to do. And of course, they take all that muscle memory and all that training with them as they get older. You know, my son is a little guy. Um, I've, seen, I've seen bigger kids try to grab him and throw him to the ground, and he ends up on top. I don't want him to hurt the, the other kid. I just want him to not lose. Winning is not losing to me with my child. Uh, mixed martial arts, I think, is the uh, modern version of uh, just the samurai culture. You know, um, the ones that really do it right, I think. I think MMA is 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 a sport but it's also a way of life you know there's an old saying in um, in the karate realms um, and it was said by a, 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 a Japanese karate master and he said I gave my life to karate or karate and karate gave a way of life to me and I find it's the same thing with mixed martial arts if you you know I gave my life to mixed martial arts to martial arts which is mixed but it's martial arts mm -hmm. it's just you know it's its own brand but you know and it gives a way of life back to you it can it keep you healthy it can teach you lessons about you know being kind and, and sharing and you know being humble as we were talking about and um, how to deal with adversity how to be how to be courageous how to deal with fear and um, you know so I think you could safely say that same quote translates to MMA you give your life to mixed martial arts and mixed martial arts gives a way of life to you mm -hmm.